I think I am finally coming around to realizing it. I think there is no soft peddling it. I am not going to get an interview with George W. Bush. No matter how I promise to hold the book or say the name of it or talk about it in any sort of terms in order to promote the sales of the book, it's not going to happen. His first interview was with Matt Lauer. His second interview was with Oprah Winfrey. His third interview was with Rush Limbaugh. His fourth interview was with Sean Hannity. His fifth interview was again with Sean Hannity. His sixth interview will be with Bill O'Reilly. Uh, his seventh interview will be with Greta Van Susteren. His eighth interview will be with Candy Crowley of CNN. That'll be this weekend. His ninth interview will be with CBS Sunday Morning. His tenth interview will be with Fox and Friends. His eleventh interview will be with Jay Leno. I am not on this list. And I did not win the Facebook contest to get, try to get an interview with him. I do not think that I am going to get an interview with George W. Bush. And I am reluctantly coming to accept that. <laughs> But you know, I'm still going to lay out what I think is the central question posed by his book uh, in the hopes that maybe he will just drop by here at MSNBC one day and decide he wants to chat because he's enjoying all these other interviews. Without nitpicking, without, without even, even talking, uh, talking about doing a, a full fact check or, or following every decision point, uh, going down every rabbit hole, even without drilling into this, there is one giant glaring thing in the book that's wrong. And it's wrong even if you only consult George W. Bush himself on its veracity, even if you don't use outside sources. It is the central issue of his presidency. It is the central decision point, if you will, on the central issue of his presidency. And he gets it wrong in the book, giantly, hugely, ostentatiously provably, provenly wrong. Here's the problem. We all know that before we invaded Iraq, Mr. Bush's case for invading Iraq was that there were weapons of mass destruction, right? Right now, Iraq is expanding and improving facilities that were used for the production of biological weapons. Saddam Hussein is harboring terrorists and the instruments of terror, the instruments of mass death and destruction. We cannot wait for the final proof the smoking gun that could come in the form of a mushroom cloud. Our intelligence officials estimate that Saddam Hussein had the materials to produce as much as 500 tons of sarin, mustard, and VX nerve agent. Intelligence gathered by this and other governments leaves no doubt that the Iraqi regime continues to possess and conceal some of the most lethal weapons ever devised. Except for all the doubt. Uh, we also all know, uh, including President Bush himself knowing, uh, that when he assigned a study group to look for weapons of mass destruction after we invaded, the Iraq study group found nothing. If, if you're George W. Bush now, say, writing a book, you don't even have to go back and read the big old boring report of the Iraq study group. You can just read your own transcripts. We have not found stockpiles of weapons of mass destruction. We did not find the stockpiles. Those weapons of mass destruction got to be somewhere. <laughs> nope, no weapons over there. <laughs> Maybe under here. <laughs> Iraq did not have the weapons that our intelligence believed were there. After the weapons of mass destruction thing was debunked, George W. Bush not only said it was debunked, he then changed his stated rationale for the war. Now, he wouldn't have to do that if the weapons thing still stood, right? I mean, why change your argument and start saying it's about all kinds of new stuff that's not weapons if you could keep counting on the old weapons argument that you'd used in the first place? After the weapons issue was disproven and George W. Bush admitted it, the president stopped talking about weapons and he instead brought up all kinds of new arguments for why we invaded Iraq. He argued that we had to invade Iraq because Saddam was committing fraud in the UN oil for food program, you may recall. Saddam was systematically gaming the system using the UN oil for food program to try to influence countries and companies in an effort to undermine sanctions. See, it wasn't weapons. It was that George W. Bush was interested in ensuring the integrity of UN programs and was willing to back up the integrity of those UN programs with the might of the US military. Yeah. Uh, then he argued that we had to invade Iraq to create democracy.
Advancing the cause of freedom and democracy in the Middle East begins with ensuring the success of a free Iraq. He also tried the argument that we had to invade Iraq in order to save Iraq's women. As the citizens of Afghanistan and Iraq seize the moment, their example will send a message of hope throughout a vital region. Young women across the Middle East will hear the message that their day of equality and justice is coming. Mr. Bush also then argued that we had to invade Iraq in order, this is novel, uh, to get new allies. The goal in Iraq and Afghanistan is for there to be democratic and free countries who are allies in the war on terror. That's the goal. Whatever you think about the we invaded because of the oil for food program and we invaded for the women and we invaded because we needed allies, whatever you think about the individual merit of these retroactive rationales for starting the war that we heard from George W. Bush after he started the war, whatever you think of each of those arguments, the bare fact remains, just in pure logical terms, that we would not have all those retroactive rationales if the reason President Bush said we had to start the war in the first place had held up. Iraq did not have the weapons. Right. Iraq did not have the weapons. And George W. Bush knew it and admitted it and therefore changed the explanation for why we had to go to war. George W. Bush, in his own recent history, in just the last few years, admitted that weapons of mass destruction were not why we went to Iraq. He's admitted it, except in his new book, he regresses, despite admitting it over and over and over again before, despite changing his rationales for the war to account for the fact that he couldn't talk about weapons anymore. And now we're back to weapons again. Now we're back to pre-Iraq war Bush again, saying that removing Saddam from power was the right decision for all the difficulties that followed America is safer without a homicidal dictator pursuing WMD, pursuing WMD. Saddam Hussein was not pursuing WMD. We know it. George Bush knows it and admitted it before, but he's back to making that case again in this book now. This is in the book that came out today. That's why George Bush feels good about the Iraq invasion despite everything else that happened. I know he's the past president. I know this is a book tour. I know I'm never going to get to ask him this directly, and I know we're a different country now. But we're a different country now. Are we supposed to fall for this again?